Horns up, happy new year and welcome to Headbangers Kitchen. This is my new series called Fat Loss Friday. Now in 2022, we close the keto chapter and this year is all about sustainability and building good habits. Basically, we want to make small sustainable lifestyle changes that we can actually adhere to. But if you are here looking to learn how to do the keto diet or a keto meal plan, just click here on the i button for my Keto for Beginners series and I wish you all the best in your keto journey. Now on this series, every week I will give you a new meal plan that can help you on your fat loss journey along with my tips, tricks and best practices. So before we dive into the recipes, here are my top tips. Tip number one, calories matter. Look, no matter what diet you're doing, it's calories in versus calories out. To lose weight, you have to eat in a calorie deficit. Now while this may seem very simple and very black and white, there are some nuances to it which I'm not really going to get into but the long story short is if you want to lose weight or if you are losing weight it is simply because you are in a calorie deficit whether you are doing keto, paleo, carnivore, vegan it doesn't matter if you are losing weight it's because you are in a calorie deficit and if you are not losing weight it's because you are not in one. Tip number two Calculate your macros and calorie requirements. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I did a series called My Unimpressive Weight Loss Transformation. Click on the I button and watch that series where I teach you how to calculate your calorie requirement for the day, how to log your calories and basically I give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually lose weight. So please do watch that. Now it's very important that you actually do this calculation so that you can understand just how much food you need to eat on a daily basis to actually lose weight. For example, if your calorie requirement is 2000 calories a day, you need to eat less than that to actually lose weight. And if you know this number, then you can actually figure out how much food you need to eat. Otherwise, you're just basically shooting in the dark. Tip number three, meal prep. I cannot stress just how important it is to cook all your meals in advance and be ready. Most of the time we make bad decisions when we are hungry and there is no food in the house. If you have meal prepped, you will always have your meals ready to go, pop it in the microwave and then you can enjoy a healthy delicious meal. Otherwise you are going to be calling for takeout and you will generally go off plan. So meal prep, super important, make sure you do it. Tip number four eat the same food now most of my meal plans are for an entire week and there is a reason for that yes eating the same food every day can get boring but this is what is going to help you stay on track look if you have the time energy and patience to make fresh meals every day and to calculate the macros and calories by all means go ahead but most people don't have the time to do that which is why if you're eating the same food, it basically sets you up for success. So if your meal is 1200 calories or 1500 calories and you eat the same thing every day, you know that you are on track and you don't need to worry about recalculating or weighing out the food again. So this in my books is a great thing to do. But I understand that sometimes you may get bored. So at least try to eat the same food for three to four days so that you can sort of have that variety but still maintain consistency. Tip number five, focus on the protein macro. Try to get 20 to 25 grams of protein in with every meal. I cannot even begin to explain to you the benefits of protein. That would be a separate video on its own. But protein is an essential macronutrient to maintain your muscle, to build muscle and it is basically the building block of life. So focus on protein and that will help you retain muscle while you are losing fat. Tip number six, make sure you exercise and make sure you do a mix of both cardio and strength training. Lift weights because that is what's gonna help you to maintain your muscle so that when you actually lose weight, you are losing more fat and less muscle. This is very important so that you don't end up looking skinny fat like a lot of people do. Also, cardio is just good for your heart health and your overall well-being. So get in a mix of strength training and cardio for best results. And my final tip is moderate your indulgences. Look, life is about enjoying yourself and for a lot of us, food is a great source of enjoyment. So there is no reason to deprive ourselves of foods that we actually like. 
but we can moderate it let me give you an example i love burgers and i do enjoy my french fries as well so if i'm going to eat burgers and fries i know that burgers are about 600 calories fries are about 400 calories so when i do eat a burger i'll probably eat half a burger for one meal with half the fries and then this the leftovers will be another meal that way i get to indulge but i'm not over consuming on each meal similarly if i go out drinking with my friends and i have a drink or two and i overeat the next morning i'll just have a light breakfast of fruit to compensate for you know the indulgence the night before you can use intermittent fasting as a tool to help you with this but my point is don't deprive yourself because that often leads to people binging because they feel deprived at least that's how it was for me of course don't stock up your pantry with cake and cookies but if you go out with your friends and you want to have a cookie enjoy it so moderate your indulgences okay that was enough jibber jabber from me let's get to the meal plan so you're going to start your day with a sandwich for breakfast this is my grilled chicken sandwich that's high in protein and extremely delicious we need to make a slaw for this sandwich and i'm going to be using some purple cabbage i will just chop it really thin and fine you can use regular cabbage as well no problem I try and keep things colorful. This is about 200 grams of cabbage. To this I add about 50 grams of some arugula lettuce, season with salt, pepper, the juice of half a lime, then in goes 75 grams of low fat mayonnaise, a tablespoon of 15 grams of yellow mustard and a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce. Just give that a good mix and our slaw is ready. This is 5 servings of slaw. Now for my grilled chicken I will be using chicken breast. I will season it with a nice barbecue spice rub that I got from a local company. You can however use any brand that you like and that's available in your local supermarket. Once it's seasoned on both sides, let's cook it. I heat a teaspoon of olive oil in my pan and then add in my chicken and let it cook for about 3 to 4 minutes on each side. I flip that over once and just look at the color on that breast. Now to ensure a perfectly cooked breast that is both moist and juicy, make sure you use a meat thermometer. And when the thickest part of the breast is at 160 Fahrenheit or 70 C, remove it from the pan and let it rest. Once that meat has been well rested, just cut into it and you should have a chicken breast that is not dry and tough but tender and juicy. To assemble our sandwich, get out your kitchen scale as we need to weigh everything. I'm just using plain white bread. I put 60 grams of the slaw on that, 85 grams of the chicken breast, season with salt and pepper, cover with the second slice of bread and then just cut it. And our grilled chicken sandwich is ready. This sandwich comes in at 350 calories with 30 grams of protein. The perfect way to start your day. It also makes a great grab and go breakfast if you make it in advance. Anyway, that's your breakfast. So that was your breakfast. And for lunch, you're going to have my delicious fish noodle bowl, which is some rice noodles in a flavorful broth and some lovely white fish and vegetables. The base of our broth is going to be these amazing dried shiitake mushrooms that you can buy online or at your local Asian grocery store. After giving them a wash, I soak them in some boiling water for about 30 to 40 minutes. After that, I remove the mushrooms from the water making sure I give each mushroom a good squeeze. This takes out the excess water. Now I chop the mushrooms but I make sure to remove the stem first because even after soaking, that is going to be chewy and rubbery so you don't need it. So I cut that out and slice up the mushrooms. Now I take some bok choy which is a kind of Chinese cabbage and I just cut it at the base to separate all the leaves. Then I'll wash them under running water. I take that mushroom soaking liquid and I strain it to get rid of any dirt that might be there in it. Then I add some water so I have about 500 ml of liquid. I pour that in a saucepan, add a little more water because I want more broth. I add a beef stock cube to that, you can also use chicken or seafood. 1 tablespoon of dark soya sauce and 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce. Now I get that broth on the stove and bring it to a boil. I add in the bok choy and cover and cook for about 3 to 4 minutes till they are tender. Once they are cooked, I remove them from the broth. Then I add my mushrooms to the broth and cover and cook for about 3 to 4 minutes. This allows the mushrooms to absorb all the flavor of the broth. Once they are done, remove them. Now just save that broth for later. For the fish, I'm just going to be using some tilapia fillets as they are cheap and easy to get here. But you can use any kind of white fish that you like. 
I get a pan on the stove and spray it with some pan spray. Then I season the pan with some salt and lay down my fish fillets. I season the other side with salt and a mix of paprika, garlic powder and pepper. After about 2 minutes of cooking, I flip them over and let them finish. These are thin fillets so they literally take 4 to 5 minutes in total to cook. Once done, I remove them from the pan. Now to assemble the dish, I get my broth, the noodles, the mushrooms, my fish and the bok choy and we are ready to bring this dish together. These are rice noodles that I am using and they come in these small little bricks. Each one of them is about 200 calories and that's perfect for my calorie requirement. You can of course use any noodles that you like but keep an eye on the calories. Now to make your meal prep boxes, just get your scale out and your container and then fill it with the bok choy, fish and mushrooms. You can cook the noodles fresh before each meal as it takes only 3 minutes and the broth can be stored separately as well. Now that I'm going to eat, I'm going to get some broth in a pot and get it on the stove. Then I put the noodles in the broth and I cook it for about 3 minutes. Once they are done, I will remove them. Now I add the noodles to my bowl, pour 150 ml of the broth, 85 grams of cooked fish, 75 grams of the bok choy and 50 grams of the mushrooms. Then I sprinkle less than 1 teaspoon of some furekake seasoning over the top. You can also just use sesame seeds no problem and a few sprigs of coriander to finish. This fish noodle bowl clocks in at 430 calories with 30 grams of protein. It's a super light and delicious lunch and still packed with protein. So that's your lunch right there. Enjoy! Now in case you find yourself hungry and in need of a snack, fruits and vegetables are your friends. Here is what I'm snacking on this week. Carrots which are just 41 calories per 100 grams. I like a good crunchy carrot. Cucumbers which are just 15 calories per 100 grams. Dragon fruit which is just 60 calories per 100 grams and if you can't get dragon fruit just eat watermelon instead. Oranges which are 47 calories per 100 grams or you can just have an apple instead. That's cool. Now for dinner you're going to be eating meat and potatoes. I've got an amazing dice steak recipe for you which is served with a creamy mash and some spinach. For the meat of our meat and potatoes, I'm going to be using fillet of beef. I honestly suggest you get whatever steak cut is affordable to you. I bought a whole tenderloin which was actually quite a small tenderloin, very badly cleaned and given to me but I managed to cut a couple of good steaks out of it. I got those steaks on a wire rack and I seasoned them with salt and pepper on both sides and then I popped them in the fridge to kind of dry brine. Oh, I forgot to add garlic powder so I also seasoned it with garlic powder on both sides and then returned it to the fridge. Next I peel my potatoes and I'm just using whatever regular potatoes we get here in Bombay city but I believe russet potatoes is what is best for my foreign friends. Once peeled I cut them into medium sized cubes which help them cook faster. This is roughly 500 grams of potatoes. I wash them under water and then just let them sit in the water for a bit. I get a pot of water on the stove now and make it salty like the sea by stirring in some salt. Then I drain and add the potatoes to it. I turn the heat on and cover and cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. After which I open it up, I run my knife through the potato and if it cuts through like a hot knife through butter then it means the potatoes are cooked. And then I get them out of the pan. Now I add some butter into a bowl and then I get out my potato ricer and I rice the hot potatoes right into the bowl of butter. Now you can use a regular potato masher, that's fine but the fluffiness of a potato ricer is unmatched. It just does something to the texture. Anyway, I season it with some pepper, no salt because the water was already salty and then I give everything a good mix. And my mashed potatoes are pretty much done and ready. These are some of the lightest and fluffiest mashed potatoes you will eat. Now let's cook the steaks. I heat a teaspoon of avocado oil in my pan and when it's ripping hot, I add in the steaks. I'm just looking to get a nice sear on all sides of the steak. I mean just look at that crust. So sear the steaks on all sides and once you've cooked that, you can remove it. I will now sear the next lot. Now don't worry about the doneness of the steak because this is a recipe where the steak is cooked twice. So it's fine if the steak is a little blue or raw inside. Anyway, remove the steaks when done and let them rest. In the same pan, I will now add a packet of spinach and some water and cover it and let it wilt down. After 2 minutes, pop the lid and ideally you should season it with some salt here which I forgot to do. But let that liquid cook out and once that's done, remove the spinach from the pan. Now I'm going to cut my steak after it's been properly rested and you can see that it's rather blue bordering on raw. And that's okay because it's going to get cooked again. 
So cut them into nice cubes and now let's do our second cook. In the same pan, I am going to add some water, some Worcestershire sauce and some soya sauce. I will season that with pepper and now reduce that down till it's a syrupy consistency. Then you just add in your beef and toss that and cook it on a high heat till that glaze coats all the beef. Then you just remove it from the pan. Time to plate up one portion of this meal and as always get out your scale. 100 grams of mashed potato, 100 grams of cooked spinach and 100 grams of that steak. And that's your full dinner clocking in at 460 calories, 280 calories for the steak, 157 for the potato and 22 for the spinach. Now that's a good way to finish your day. And that ladies and gentlemen is your breakfast, lunch and dinner. Your meal plan that you can lose to help you on your fat loss journey. Again, you can tailor this meal plan to suit your calorie requirements, especially the quantities. This is what I am going to be eating to lose body fat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do smash that like button if you did. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome food recipes. And I will see you next week, same time, same place for another edition of Fat Loss Friday. Until then, cheers and keep cooking. Hey folks, these videos are made possible because of the amazing people who support me on Patreon and here on the YouTube channel memberships. If you'd like to join the Headbangers Kitchen Inner Circle, the links are in the video description box just below this video.